Use your fucking words! Wizard 101 released in late 2008, and it was the first MMO that I ever played, and is the big reason that I am addicted to MMOs today. If you don't know what Wizard 101 is, it's a MMO where the player crafts a witcher wizard based on seven different elements, explores the world through the use of weird monetization methods, builds a house with tons of different skins and customizations, and while leveling up and collecting more powerful spells, you'll be able to fight back evil mages and beasts at the same time. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences with the game and what I believe the devs could do to make the game overall more popular popular. The character creation and tutorial set up the game perfectly for the player. After starting the game, it quickly guides you to a short quiz where you'll make various choices based on your personality that'll help you choose which of the seven elements you want your character to be based around. Although the game will not lock you into a character choice and will allow you to change it while still in character creation. Personally, I always get lightning. Ironic, I know. After making your character, you're launched into a short tutorial that teaches the player a lot. Obviously, it teaches the basics like walking and talking, but it throws you straight into combat with the main villain, allowing the player to get a hint into the lore without getting super super deep into the game. When introduced in this way, the game also allows you to get a taste of in-game spells while learning combat at the same time. I absolutely love this introduction as it feels like you're already a massive part of the game, allowing players to get immersed very quickly. Exploration and questing takes up 90% of the entire game, making it the main aspect in the game. After completing the tutorial, you'll be thrown in the streets of Wizard City, where the player can begin discovering magic shops, pets, new spells, and items to use on their journey. This is also where most of the player base spends their time flexing skins they bought or found. When first coming to this zone, the players immediately are thrown into doing quests throughout the various zones of Wizard City. Oh, so this is the chick that runs the fairies? Bro, wait, wait, wait. She's kind of bad, no? Wait. So if, if she doesn't have an age on here, does that mean she's as old as the game? Most of these quests are fairly simple, as they usually consist of going to a zone to destroy a few enemies and return the quest. Then this eventually leads to the player to fight a boss and collect some items until the zone is complete. Making the game get boring very quickly, as each zone is designed with unique enemies and art styles, but is the same zone and world repeated within different skins. On top of this, almost all new zones or worlds require the player to pay in order to continue the story, but we'll talk about that part a little more later. While exploring, you'll be able to fight multiple different types of enemies in each zone, allowing for constant unique experiences as you level up because creatures get harder spells. Jack, the Pumpkin King. The Pumpkin King tried to bust all over me! His snake's all over me! I feel violated. One of my favorite parts about combat is how well it's designed, as they made it where you can decide when you want to fight and exactly what type of enemies you want to fight. By not only putting different enemies in different areas, but making it where players can only fight a max of one target per player in a duel unless they're fighting unique enemies and bosses, all while allowing other players to join your duels and help you complete them or make them harder. I personally found this fairly enjoyable, besides a few times where players would hop into my duel and make it harder when I was trying to get something done. On top of this, as I leveled up, I was able to obtain new spells, allowing me to have more unique attacks, buffs, and debuffs for combat. Although I can never seem to find better gear for myself. I definitely say, though, one of the best parts about exploration is the voice acting as it seems every little NPC is voice acted in some way. Ah, the spell is working. Look, Gamma. Finally, we have found one. Now, some were definitely better than others, but overall, it made the game 10 times more enjoyable to play as you experience most of the voice acting. As you progress through the beginning areas of the game, you're also introduced to pets, housing, and mounts. Pets are fairly good most of the time. They start as a baby version of itself. Then over time, the player can raise it through different foods and battles, allowing the pet to become very strong and help the player in a battle and in some quests. There really isn't anything bad to say about pets besides maybe the best ones come from the shop. Housing is insanely good as there's a multitude of houses you can acquire in game that have tons of decorations, materials, to allow the player to design it in the way that they like. Finally, I believe the mounts are kind of lacking as there are a lot of cool ones, but 90% of them come from the shop and a lot of them only last a certain amount of time. So if you buy one, make sure you check if it's only for a limited time or you might end up wasting your own money. If the wiki is correct, then there's 20 different worlds with various zones that all vary at different prices. And when added together, it costs about 180,000 crowns or 450 USD when not on sale, making this one of the scummiest monetization methods in any game I've ever played. In fact, I prefer a complete pay to win game than one where you can become soft locked after only an hour half of playing. On the other side of this, you can buy a monthly membership for $10 USD monthly or $60 for a yearly membership. All this being said, it truly sucks because this game's potential is unreal as the game is insanely unique in its play style but has terrible monetization methods. So what would I do to improve the game? Firstly, I make all zones that are a part of the main quest free to play and give anyone who bought the zones 10k free crowns as long as they can prove that they bought it through in-game screenshots or receipts. Then I'd add more options to character customization for free such as new name choices, hairstyles, and face shapes. After this, I'd revamp the graphics ever so slightly as they don't need 
need to be on par with Tarkov, but something around the original Dungeon Defenders would be amazing. Overall, Wizard 101 is an amazing concept for a game, but the game is severely lacking when it comes to gameplay. As almost every feature in the game is very well designed for the time period it was released, but clearly hasn't gotten much love over the years as it has been developed. One of my favorite aspects of the game, though, is the combat formula and the undying loyalty of the fans. I truly believe if the devs started to do quality of life updates, not only would they make more money, but the game would become much more popular. As someone who played this as their first MMO, I'm slightly disappointed in the game's development. With all that being said, with the current state of the game, I have to rate this game a 4.2 out of 10 and probably won't be playing it in the future unless something major changes. Let me know in the comments below what you like about Wizard 101. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.